of King David and how his name is like that made God to refer to him as a man after his own heart. David was the man who God spoke to us in the Bible. He said, this is the man after my heart. Then the question is, what are the things that David did that led God to make such statements concerning him? Remember that David was not the first king of Israel. The first king of Israel was Saul. Was there things that Saul did that David did not do? Or David did, but yet, God said, this is a man after my heart. Let's go to the book of Acts of Apostles 13, we read verse 22. The book of Acts of Apostles, chapter number 13, verse 22. If you are there, I read. He said, and when he had removed him, that was Saul, he raised up unto them David to be their king, to whom also he gave testimony and said, I have found David, the son of Jesse, a man after my own heart, which shall fulfill all my will. That was the condition there. Which shall fulfill all my condition. That means that Saul did not fulfill God's condition. And the condition of the will of God is written in the word of God, the Bible. Those things God said, I should not do. You should not do. How much of those laws have we kept? You cannot be a man or even a woman under God's heart when you do things on your own, when you don't follow the later rules of God, when you don't follow the commandments of God, if God says go to the right, you are going to the left. You cannot be a man after God's own heart when you are doing what pleases you. You can only be a man after God's heart if only you do those things that pleases him. So we look at the attributes of a man that is after God's heart. The first one is that man must be faithful in little things. He must be faithful in little things. Two, he must be a giant slayer, a giant killer. The third one is he must be obedient to the will of God. That is the most important of the attributes. The man must be obedient to the will of God. Then what a man after God's heart does not mean. The following things does not define or determine a man after God's heart. One, perfection. Like David, David was not perfect. But yet God called him a man after his heart. That was why I posed that question to us. I said, what we are the thing that David did that we don't know, that God saw, that, that made God to make that statement? The difference is in the character. The difference is in the character. Like Saul, as we go for that, we discover that Saul, whenever he, you know, offend God, he's of him to appreciate the fact that he offended God and asked for forgiveness. He goes about giving excuses. Like some of us do, including me. You know you were wrong. Like other day the Lord always tell us, sorry is five letter words. Very simple, but very powerful. The many of us find it very, very difficult to use those words. 
سال و بقیه هم بحث هایی بقیه هم بحث هایی بحث هایی این دو از این سیزیاریتی آف تویز نا تو داست تو فوفیل ها های کاسته هست تو ما فاسه امیسا دو داست تو رو میگاه که نه تو داست ایسا بیشون کام تو رو میگاه هم بیشون بیست بیلی ساله نا تو داست تو بینی اما تنسه بیلی ساله So the difference is in character. We know that David did so many abominable things. Yes. Yet God said he is a man after his heart. But so we are looking at the you know, attributes of what it means, sorry, of what it does mean to be a man after God's heart. We are talking about perfection. It does not mean that we never met a mystery. It is interesting that God described David in that sentence. God would have used many words, David the murderer or David the daughter, but he says David the man after God's own heart. This gives us hope that whatever you did in your past do not have to be what describes you. It gives us hope that the life you lived in the past will not describe who you are once you turn a new need. Every one of us, including me, we make mistakes in the past. We did things that we are not supposed to do, deliberately or otherwise. But what is important is the fact that we realize our mistakes and go to God in prayer and say, God, I'm very sorry for what I did yesterday. I'm very sorry for what I did yesterday. Yes. And sincerely, you know, you confess your sin and you take, you know, turn a new deed. So what the, this meditation us is once you are serious about turning a new deed, God will not ascribe those things you did in the past to you anymore. He will begin to see you as a new person, as his child. These are the things that happened in the life of David that made God to describe him as a man after his heart. It is important to say as okay, although David was not perfect, he was repentant of his sins. He was not perfect, but he was repentant of his sins, unlike his predecessor in office. So so whenever you go astray, whenever you find yourself making one mistake or another, sincerely go to your creator and tell him with the sincerity of heart that you are very sorry. And he will have mercy in the name of Jesus. I said he will have mercy in the name of Jesus. From David's life, we learn that we don't have to be perfect to be a man after God's own heart. David possessed characteristics that override those ugly stages of his life. He possesses characteristics that override the ugly stages of his life. What are the characteristics? Whenever he offends God, he always go into prayer asking for forgiveness. Whenever he offends God, he goes into prayer, sincerely seeking the face of God and asking for forgiveness. And that which many of us do not do. Many of us, even in the, in the state of our sinfulness, we still boast. That's why sometimes you see some people, when they do something, you begin to ask yourself questions if this person has any. Training whatsoever. There are some people, men and women, boys and girls, their characters are nothing to write home about. Then you ask yourself, did this girl come from your home? Did this boy come from your home? This man, did he suck the breast of his mother? Because you look at you know, the, the, the behavior, you shake your head. All these things are in us. But 
as we go through that, we discover that the word of God will do the matter of us and make us perfect. So David is not perfect, but God acknowledges him as a man after his heart. B, it does not mean a man who has no problem, a man who has no trials. So a man after God's heart does not mean that he does not have problems or trials. There are times where David ran for his life. There are times people made conspiracy against him or people conspired against him. Times he needed to fight. Being a man after God's own heart is not trial free. Being a man after God's heart is not trial free. It is not pleasure free or disconnected from reality and problems. So a man after God's heart is not disconnected from the realities of life and problems of life. What does it mean based on the life of David to be a man after God's heart? We said one, be faithful in little things. The Bible helps us to understand that David was faithful in little things, that he was taking care of his father's sheep. As insignificant as that occupation may be, he did it with all his heart. Many of us would not want to do it. Many of us want something higher. If you come to that of where we are doing this, there's a place they call for misland. The man that in that place is from Matthew Day. The story said he did some contact with the military around 1970 something or thereabout. And when he finished the contract, they, they would not pay him because the amount was so much. So along the night then, the Taliko was still in a bush. They used that part of the bush to compensate him or pay for the contract that he did. Then years later, Taliko turned into be a big market. Now the man has one of the biggest markets in Taliko. His son went to IIT. So after his school, the father said he should come and manage the promised land and shopping plaza or homeless. The young man felt that this is an insult to his personality as the son of a rich man for his father to ask him to come and manage the business uh, plaza. He felt it was an insult, a slight. To his person. Now he recommended to his father his friend in the school for many new states. And that guy now Dave is a big man. Yes, he's the one that is managing the place, he's the one that building all the shops. And when he build, you pay. When he build, you pay. And at the end of the year, you pay. So everything is in his name. All the job water, bottle water you drink in that promised land is from his back. They don't create another pure water or water water inside the set to money it in. So as I said that you are not permitted. So that kind is in money. Why the young man prefer to go to the many? Little things. The Bible said there are little things that God's words that matter. David started from making. He never knew that God was using that opportunity to groom him to be a leader in the future. So do not neglect that humble beginning. You don't know where God is taking you to go. This is the truth of our life. Most of us, the experiences we have today is the little training we have then in the village. The little experience we have today is the little training we have then in the village. I was telling somebody, I said I never knew I would be able to stand before a crowd and speak. It was little training that started when I was in secondary school in the village. Then we had a very uh, we have an organization in my village that if you're a man, a woman, or a young girl, you are a member. But once a woman is married, we send her off, we give. But a man still remains a member till death. So at that time, there was no secretary, and the meeting did not go for about three months. So they called the meeting, we went to the meeting, and people that were left on this school there, they are asked to take the position of secretary. They said, no, they prefer to bring fine than to hold the position. That was when there was respect. So one, one man 
And he was once the guy I get to them, but he said, then he was the of the he called me in the midst of the crowd. He said I should be the second. I looked at him and I said, in my mind, do you know what you're talking about? So out of respect, I accepted that position. I never knew that one day I'll be able to stand before people and speak. That was how I started. Later on in life, I got job. I never knew I worked with seven of the company and I became a member of the union as sun secretary. And I still remember the first meeting we had with management. The executives asked me to, you know, take care of the meetings and produces. And when I did, they gave me a play that I did very well. And the it was, I was coming from something. So when, when you are asked to do something, no matter how you mean it, you may be not look down on it. You don't know where God is taking you to. That's why sometimes I laugh at some people when they are asked to do something in the church. They, you know, they begin to act smart. I laugh at them because the time you come, that those things you are going away from wherever you go, those things will be waiting for you there. So the area they start doing them and master them, they better for everyone of us. And I pray that God will help us in the name of Jesus. I pray that God will help us in the name of Jesus. So it does not mean who has okay, so that I that being faithful in everything. Being a man after God's heart starts with who you are when no one is looking. Being a man after God's heart. Being faithful in everything. Being means It starts with who you are, sorry, when no one is looking. It starts with what you do with the things that people consider or regard as insignificant. When you look at the life of David on the surface, that does not seem much to be blessed God. When you look at his life as a man or a boy that takes care of the sheep, on the surface, he does not impress God, but he is doing so well. He was nice looking as a young man, but his job wasn't exciting. The middle of us had an exciting job, a job full of fun. Ah, I work with the oil industry. Ah, I'm a banker. That's what we want to do. None of us want to start small. Nobody wants to be associated or identified as a hawker that he, he or she hawks pure water. But some people have made fortune from hawking pure water. That is why it is important to don't not come to things. And I pray God will help us in the name of Jesus. He was a very young shepherd taking care of sheep in a little village of Bethlehem. The Bible said he was keeping his father's sheep and he did well by protecting them. Let's see the book of 1 Samuel 17. 1 Samuel 17. Computer, please help us because of time. 1 Samuel 17. Verse 34. He said, And David said unto Saul, Thy servant kept his father's sheep, and there came a lion and a bear. And took a lamb out of the flock. Verse 35, and I went out after him and smote him and delivered it out of his mouth. And when I went against me, I caught him by his beard and smote him and slain him. This was the secret of that little beginning. In the process of taking care of his father's sheep, he was, you know, trained by God. This is the way that he became fearless. Even when there is reason for, for him to be afraid, he became fearless that he could go after a lion. You know what it means as a man, you know, with bare hands, he go after it. Even with God, he takes courage. Many of us, including me, if you give me an egg for tonight and the lion would have me, I would not, I would not be done at all. Praise the Lord. Yes, that is the truth about life. You don't need to hide it. So it takes courage for me to go after a bear or a lion. He said when they come and you know take away the sheep with their mouth, you run after them, you will steal the sheep from their mouth. And when the lion comes around to fight me, I fight back and I kill them. So it's not negative things because in the process there are so many you know training 
so many knowledge you can you get in that process. And that was what happened to baby. He never knew that the day would come in his life when he would face a giant like the day. He never knew that the day would come in his life when he would be the king of Israel. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. He was doing the job no man or no one wants to do. And he did the job well. When everyone was out, we had the action and the excitement was, he was a bush taking care of his father's sheep. When people, that's what people want, they want to be where the action is, where the fall is. That's what they want to be. That's why if you go to the village like my place now, I remember when we are coming up, you have people that climb the palm tree and cut. Now, if you go to my village, you see a lot of palm trees with fruits. Why? No young boy want to do that. If you want to go to school, my friend wants to go abroad and carry the pen and make money. Because somebody that is carrying the pen and succeeded, so he wants to carry. Even my cousin now, or my nephew now, is in prison. When I travel home, they were trying to hide it, but not the father forced it out. Maybe some people did, and they went. They got to be sitting in prison. I only pray that God will have this your point. So we don't neglect those little things. Every one of us, we are earning so high. It's good, but a total of 1,000 times starts with the step. You don't come to that counting one. You don't. If you come to that counting one, it will not be complete. Yes. You can't come to without counting one. So like I said, every one of us want to be where the action and the excitement was. But David was at the bush taking care of his father's sheep and protecting them. David had true courage. He had true courage. And that courage came to 20. That courage came to 20. Because it was in the process of being the bush, taking care of the sheep, and counting all those animals that he built his courage. You know that some people cannot be cockroach in the house. Yes. Once they see cockroach, they plant it, they make all their life. Honey, come and kill this cockroach. Yes, some can't even withstand that in the house. So it takes courage, and courage does not come in the house. Courage comes to training. Courage comes, is a process. And God will help us in that name of Jesus. Then it has to courage. He could not run from the lion nor bear. He was able to do the daily job no one would do. Today, there are Christians who miss this. They will serve if it is exciting and involved if it is fun. That is the truth. In today's Christian life, many Christians will only be involved if it is fun. They will only be involved if it is exciting. If not, you can them out. But God is using David as a case study to make us to know that you don't neglect that little thing. That little thing. There are people I read their story, they started from nothing. And by the grace of God upon their life, they are somewhere big. Some people are there today, what you want to do? I have a friend in the market, he served his brother for me. The brother said to him, and the heart of the man said to Then the man said to him, he gave him from the right path. That's why it is important when you are doing something, allow yourself to be trained. It is not allow yourself to be trained. You know, somebody who is an important, they bring that up then. They bring that up to us. It doesn't give you the price. Anything you tell him, he will collect the money. Because he refused to them. When he was, at, when the heart of the man, he was giving 400,000. He spanned the money. Because he doesn't know what to buy. That's where the thing comes in. He spent that in order. Now, what he does is good. he goes from one warehouse to the other. And that sometimes that he's still living today. I was discussing with one of his brother. I said, This person came before me and we are married, he's not married. He said, His brother doesn't want to learn. He said, Do you know that from Monday to Saturday, my brother will work hard as he took me from one warehouse to the other, buying the goods when he buys it for himself? 
like this, this uh, little corner, if you see the corner, one face, two face, four face, they will buy it and bring it to the people that sell all these uh, domestic uh, appliances. They will buy from him and he will make some change. At the end of the week, probably he made 30,000. He will go and go in the hotel with two women and lavish it. Then the money that I go to, when he comes to the market, he will come to it. He will not even come to the market, he will transfer. Then he will move out. If he sees something to buy, he will not come to pass the water. Maybe this is like that pass the water. I saw it online somewhere. Give me one dollar and give me one day to see it. So training is very important. If you are not trained, when you are giving something, you cannot handle it. That's the truth of our life. And God will help us in the name of Jesus. So the devil must do the dating jobs so people who do not, you know, you want to be associated with the higher man, something that is vampire, some of us. Don't want to, when he said, okay, go to school, no, I'm going to have them work, he said, he's never done it for what? Don't you go to school, he said, no, so what guys do you want to do? Want them to take bad documents and take you as well. If you go to a girl without any experience, you went there, that's why we have some of them there. They have been there for years because they went there without experience. People that have experience, after some weeks, months, years of doing a girl, they start sending from them. Because they have to have something they know that they're going to buy. I have cousins there. They don't know that computer is market. They don't know that, you know, jeep, body parts, engine, they are market. They are there and doing time. People that know, they don't compare every month and they are making millions. Training and experience. That was what they did again when he was taking care of his father's sheep in the bush. So like I said today, there are Christians who miss this, this. They will start if it is exciting and before if it is fun. Don't you think that only only boost your ego. Don't do things that only boost your ego. Be willing, for God's sake, to do the job others does not want to do. Even if people consider it not important. A man after God's heart is willing to get his hands dead. A man after God's heart is willing to get his hands dead. A man is willing to get his hands dead. Yes, if you are the same like that time, your husband will kill you. Yes. Maybe like the meeting, you're supposed to go to the farm, we are protecting. Then when it is time for harvest, we are going to do the harvest. And that person farm is not possible. It is not. It is not. Let's see Colossians 3, verse 2 to 3. Colossians 3. Colossians 3 verse 10 he said, And whatsoever you hear you, do it happy as to the Lord and not unto men. So whatever you are asked to do, whatever you find yourself doing, do it with the best ability in you. And God will help us in the name of Jesus. David's father and family did not value this insignificant task, but God did, and God rewarded it. So when you are using people may not appreciate it. People may not even consider it, or people may not take it to heart. But like David, even the family was like, after all, what is he doing? Is he not taking care of the sheep? But God Himself did, and He said God did what He wanted Him. So as you text that step, God will reward you in the name of Jesus. God was preparing and training David to be a leader, the shepherd of Israel. In that process, God was preparing him, and God was training him to be. A leader. Two, a tenth layer. First Samuel 17, verse 34. First Samuel 17, verse 34. David learned to do this in the secret 
This is an important lesson. Don't try to do in the public what you don't first do in the private or in the secret. Don't try to get involved with public battles. If you don't have victory over your private or secret battles, don't try to lead the public if you can't lead yourself. Praise the Lord. First Samuel 17. Verse 34. And David said unto Saul, Thy servant kept his father's sheep. That's every story. David said, Moreover, the Lord that delivered me out of the fear of the lion and out of the fear of the bear, he will deliver me out of the hand of this Philistine. And Saul said unto David, Go, and the Lord be with thee. It don't come out in the open when you are not prepared in the city. Like kings, before they collect you, there are train trainings and whatever thing they do in the secret before the day of coronation. They don't just announce you as a king and the only thing they bring you because before they publish prayer and coronate you, you will be prepared. So you, you cannot be a dead killer in the public when you are not a dead killer in the secret. So you practice it in the public. I remember when I was small, when I was attending white women to start to be this uh, is not as a thing. I thought it was so big that people that beat that jungle were our senior seniors. So you cannot go close. You cannot. So what we do, I precisely, is if I'm at home, I'll gather this main pot. I'll get out of there and look for steak. I'll be done. That was how I was doing for years until I felt I am perfect. Then the day of my going to camp, the man that was coming at the point, maybe he was tired, maybe it was the will of God, he now gave me the juice. That was how I had my breakthrough to open this door. I did not come up one day to start with, I was doing it in the house, using me cup. I would put two of them in the money ground, use stick and thing. Until a time came when I was handling the stick. Supposing I did not you know, tell myself in the secret. And I was handling it in the public. What I will do is to respect myself and God this thing. But because I have the confidence that I have done enough training in the secrets, that was why I was confident enough to pick the stick from them and start going. So you cannot be a direct killer in the public when you are not a direct killer in the secret. It starts from the secret, from the private. What you do in the secret, how do you live your life? If you are not someone that prays in the private, you cannot pray in the public. Hallelujah. Yes, if you are somebody that does not pray in the private, it is impossible for you to pray in the public. I still remember when we were small, when we went to church on Saturday, you know, before we started the men's service. After the prayer, the man of God would say, Any small child here, close the prayer for us. Because I don't pray in the private, so I was afraid to pray in the public. My mind would be, you know, pity. I will ask my face of the time and I will prepare let this call pass over me. Because at times you say, to call him no child is responding, to call somebody by his name and say, wait. So what you cannot do in the secret or the private, you cannot do it in the public. So you need to start preparing yourself. That thing you want to showcase to the public you must start from home. When nobody was there, you begin to practice it. It is when you are perfect that you now showcase it. If you don't, you will be disgraced. And I pray that I will not be this place in that name of Jesus. The preparation of David for this public task started in the secret. And because of the preparation in the secret, he is able to fight or face this giant. I'm sure he may be afraid, but if he did not in any way. Okay, I'm sure he's afraid because of facing the right, but he did not show it. There will be times where you will face a giant in your life and you feel fear. But faith is not letting your fears control you. David did. Let his fears or the fears of others be 
his potentials. So what I'm trying to explain is that no man may be drama is when you are preparing with the secret, fear will go. Do you know if you are not used to talking to the public, if you are asked to address the public, you have what we call stage flight. Yes. If you are not used to it, it's not that you don't know what to say. It's not that you are not dedicated. It's not that the English is not there. But you are not used to facing the public. The first time, no matter how courageous you may be, that fear will still come. Ah, how do I address this kind of pain? Ah, in the midst of the people, there are people who are more than me. How am I going to be fear? But faith, that was what helped David. He had faith. And he was able to control his fear. And he was able to face the lion and the devil. The third one, and the most important one, he was obedient to the will of God. You cannot be a man after God's heart if you are not obedient to the will of God. This morning, our the school said it is up to you. And we read the book of Joshua 1, verse 8. He said, this book of life, you shall be the death, there in day and night. For out of it, if you want to prosper, if you want to flourish, if you want to have good success, these things come from the book of life. But you know the irony is some people hardly open the Bible. Even when God has said, if you want to be successful in life, you must always study this Bible. Many of us will read magazine from cover to cover. Read, you know, so many newspapers. Many of us, you know, stay so long on the internet, browsing, going from one side to the other. They are all good, but we don't have time for the word of God. We don't have time. And if you don't study the word of God, there is no way you will be to the word of God. What you don't have, you cannot give. And that is what distinguished David, that made God to say, this is a man after my heart, because he was obedient to the will of God. Whenever he makes a mistake as a man, he is very humble to go before God and say, I am sorry. That's why I said this is the most important. This is the big reason why David was described as a man after God's heart by God. We have Saul who disobeyed others, who stepped out of his boundaries. First Samuel 15, 10 and 11. First Samuel 15, 10 and 11. Verse 10 says, Then came the word of the Lord unto Saul, saying, unto Samuel, sorry, saying, It repented me that I have set up Saul to be king, for he is not bad from following me, and has not performed my commandments. And he reached Samuel, and he cried unto the Lord all night. So whenever we don't follow the will of God, God is not happy about it. Because he created every one of us to do his will, not to do your own personal will. But as human beings, we choose to do our will. I, I was, you know, this is the news I'm going to the Italy. These five billionaires that God said to die last week, they paid 250000 dollars each. The use of money, the money to go and look at it, and it that saved over 100 years ago. Sometimes I ask some people, what is wrong with money? Is it because they are so comforted, nothing is bothering them? Now they went and paid 250,000 to die. I don't think they have even seen them. But already, according to the news, the uh, submarine is compressed already. And the, the only one that paid me is the young boy of 17 years, he does not want to go. But the father was waiting in and go with me so that it would be my uh, father's day, uh, you know, gift. You know, and he obeyed his father as the father will that he should go with him and let it be his father's day gift. The boy went 
to make God's will. Will you? Head your church. Will you set your heart to make God's will? Let's go and see.